all for being here. My name is Angelica Fonts. I'm the Director of Organizing with the Massachusetts Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence. And today I'm accompanied by Dennis G. Wilson, otherwise known as Coach, who is a longtime educator, community activist, retired Dean of Discipline, and Emmy Award nominated film producer. So I'm glad to be here with you, Coach. Wow, you made me sound, you know, <laughs> important, you know. Thank you, Angelica. Yeah, I'm glad no, to be here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to, to dive in, but also feel free to talk more about your, your previous experiences to any of the questions that come in and as they apply. Um, and so for the first question that I have for you this afternoon is as a violence prevention advocate, you've likely witnessed the effects of gun violence firsthand. Do you mind sharing a little bit about how gun violence may have personally impacted you or your community? Yeah, unfortunately, you know, touchy subject, but it's real and sometimes you have to have real talk and real subjects because it's real life. And unfortunately, I um, experienced, unfortunately, uh, burying um, not just one of my players, but too many of my players. But the one that sticks out to me the most was a young man named Lloyd Industrious. I called him automatic because he had an automatic jump shot. Remind me of the late, great Reggie Lewis with the Boston Celtics and um, number 30. And uh, he just was a very gifted young man, uh, not just with his ability, but his intelligence too. Um, and just an uh, unbelievable uh, jump shot and, and, and poise and, and just a quiet, this, a silent assassin. Uh, and just a, a, his court presence and just his ability and skills. Um, a division one player went to Mercer University in Georgia um, and unfortunately came home on vacation and um, he, was, he left his family party and he went to a party um, near his home and he said he'd be back and him and his cousin, um, you know, I don't want to mention his name, um, but he, they went to the party and um, his, his, his cousin had a very expensive chain on. And um, so all of a sudden, I guess, the stick up guys in the party saw that they had an expensive chain so unfortunately, they robbed him as they were leaving the party. So, um, you know, it, back in the day, there was honor among thieves, so to speak, you know, where you didn't take a life and you may have rough a dude up or something like that, but you didn't take a life. And that's going across the line. So uh, they shot his cousin. And uh, as his cousin, you know, fell to the ground, they ripped a chain off his neck and so my player Lloyd, he, he um, as we say, broke, he ran to his car and two individuals, two murderers, two criminals um, uh, 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 chased him and shot him six times. And the doctor said he would have lived, but one of the bullets ricocheted off his ribs and went to his heart. Mm -hmm. So I received a call um, that morning. It happened like three or four o'clock uh, that evening prior evening and his uh, uh, sister called yelling and screaming in my ear because his two sisters were cheerleaders at the same school Madison Park High School and I just tried to calm him down and they just were saying you know they shot Lloyd they shot Lloyd and I said well what so I throw my clothes on rush over to the house and it just was a tragic scene uh, of which I coached his older brother Llewellyn and so, you know, he was trying to keep the family together and, and as well as myself. But that was a, um, that was tough. That was tough. Still tough. Still tough. 1997. So you can see how long ago that was, but yet still the effects uh, of it. And it was something that will always last because he was a special kid and didn't deserve to be taken away like that. I, I want to appreciate my, my gratitude that you feel comfortable to share that story with us today and um, just want to hold space for you to be able to share that story because it's a lot to, to come to this work as a survivor of gun violence. And I think even more so um, for you as someone who, you know, you get to really help and be a part of shaping these young people to mm -hmm. be who they are, right? Mm -hmm. When I think about the aspects of you being an educator and, and coaching, so really getting to see that young person um, thrive and then get to see that impact of gun violence that it has on their community and that ripple effects, right? Mm -hmm. um, so not only him and his cousin, unfortunately, being victims of gun violence, but how that impacts their family, the community. And their so families, both families. Uh, and think about it. 
See, these young people don't understand that they're not just just taking a life and destroying a life, but they're also destroying and affecting families' lives. So those, I went to the trial. Uh, Those two young men, right? Those young men got double life because they murdered two people. So they'll never see, you know, uh, the streets again. So not only did you take and destroy two other families, but you, they also destroyed their own family because here's a mother who had nothing to do with it, a father who had nothing to do with it, a brother or sister who had nothing to do with it. But now they lost, right, yeah. their brother, and they lost the, the perpetrators and murderers. The mother and father and brothers and sisters, if they had any, lost their son or daughter. I mean, their son, right, who will be incarcerated for life. So, but these young men out there doing crime, they don't think about that. They just think about themselves. I mean, I lost uh, uh, Simba Sharif, uh, mysteriously was thrown off the, 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 the uh, Mass Ave Bridge, which they, there's some suspicion, okay, as to how he ended up in the water because he can't swim, mm. you see? So there's some concern as to how that happened. Um, Earl Tate stabbed over drug beef on, you know, Michigan Avenue in Dorchester. I mean, what's sad is I've been to too many funerals and wakes and not enough graduations and, 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 and uh, weddings. Um, so hopefully that don't change. Yeah. No, thank you for sharing that. And I think that that brings up a good point that I, I like. I tend to remind folks, especially when I think about Um, When I'm out and about in community with my work with the coalition, right, Mm -hmm. and we talk about that ripple effect of trauma is that, um, and I actually heard this from our partners at the Louis D. Brown Peace Institute, is that for every one person directly impacted, there's a minimum of 12 folks who are Mm -hmm. also impacted by that, whether if they're a witness to that incident of gun violence, are they the family members of that person, community members, right? We can also think educators, coaches of that person who's impacted. No doubt. And and you're hitting on that so well. Extended family. Yeah. Right? Grandmother, grandfather, aunts, uncles, cousins. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Right, yeah, and it goes to show that, like, it's such a prevalent issue even here in the Commonwealth. And so people can get into the the data pieces around, right? We have some of the the lowest numbers across the nation. Um, But again, when you multiply our numbers by that minimum 12, like you're saying, and it's much more Mm -hmm. than what we've talked about, um, that number is significantly huge for that amount of trauma that's kind of living with folks. So I appreciate that. Um, the, the second part of that question that I have for you, right, as we, as we think about and digest what you mentioned, right, of the direct experiences that you've had to gun violence, is how these experiences may have influenced your work that you've done thus far um, as it pertains to advocacy and, and moving forward. You know, Angelica, I've always loved um, working with young people, you know, boys and girls. Um, it, it's funny, I think my mom was a, a, a carer of people. Um, my dad, not so much. He was so busy working and stuff. But my mom, she always was, you know, with the AMVETS doing for others, you know, and I just used to see her do that. And uh, I said, you know, wow, that's nice. She likes making people happy. You know, she likes, uh, you know, helping people, you know. So I guess I got a lot of her genes because I enjoy helping people and, and, and uh, reaching out. And, and, um, and so I've always young, liked uh, uh, working with young people, talking to young people, counseling young people. But it's funny, I was 18, and, uh, you know, of course, sports was my love. You know, I was going to go NFL or NBA. You know what I'm saying? I didn't like baseball. It was boring, too boring, too boring. Track, you know, I love track, but the, no money, no money. You know, so I said, I got to go something that's going to one. I love exciting and make money. So I'm going pro. So uh, I was 18, and so the, 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 I, I was, I, even though born on Howard Avenue off of Quincy Street, but I was raised on uh, Homestead. So the, um, uh, so the young guys, uh, like 13, 12, they wanted to get into this league, and they said, we can't get in the league unless we have a coach. I said, well, you know, you know, they said, you know, Dennis, you coach? I said, I don't know how to coach. They said, but you know how to play. I said, but playing and coaching are two different things, you know what I'm saying? So they said, but well, we don't get a coach. We can't play. I said, I put my name in. So I end up, you know, I said, hey, you know, so I'm coaching. And we won. I said, hey, I like this. This ain't bad, you know, yelling at people. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, it, uh, uh, it's just, I said, yeah. Mm. So then I got into, like, understanding the nuances of coaching. 
um, you know, strategy and, and, and defense and offense and how, you know, you can control different things. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 the challenge of coaching, you know, the competition of coaching. So that's when I started at 18. And from there, it, it's crazy. I just, you know, uh, continue to coach young kids. And then uh, my brother and I, Harry Wilson, we founded a, uh, a, a youth football and cheerleading program, um, you know, for kids in, 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 in well, first Roxbury, but to, to, to be able to, to reach out and um, include more kids and help more kids, we became the Boston Raiders. And so, you know, not to brag, very successful Super Bowl in, in Florida five times was one year. Almost, we were untied, unbeaten, unscored on, but we met a a big and stronger team from California, you know, and they, uh, it, it crushed our kids, you know, in terms of they've never been beat, never been scored on, never been tied. They just thought they were gonna roll over this team from California, and we ended up losing 22 to six. And them kids did not want to understand or hear and accept they were the number, second best team in the country. You see, I mean, not in their conference, not in their league, not in Massachusetts, in the country. They didn't want to hear that. We, yeah. And I understand, you know, we've been number one up until this team, but bang. So, you know, coaching, where can we, where can young people, because a coach, just as a teacher, is, is a, like a surrogate father if you do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? If you really sincerely care about young people and want to impact young people's lives, you know, with that book or with that chalk or with, you know, that marker or with that whiteboard or with that whistle, okay? Um, it's immeasurable, even on pole. I'm a billionaire in terms of young people like yourself and young people who who I had opportunity to coach and and help them, their families, and and um, so many success stories. Even though I told you earlier a sad story, there's more success stories with terms of kids either going to the world to work uh, or going to college. First one, you know, to graduate from college. Yeah or go to college and their family, I mean, and we're all there hugging and kissing and celebrating. It's just an a, a unbelievable feeling, you know? So it's, it's what sports is a vehicle, you know, whether it be the arts or the clubs or music or whatever, if you can find, as a saying, you guys, you young folks, you meet them where they are, you know? So yep. if, if, if sports is what you want and if, it's, if and, and you love it, then I'm gonna use that to get you to be a better person, be responsible, mm -hmm. be, be, you know, uh, 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 even though you may not love math and English or science, that you, you, in order to do this, you gotta do that, okay? You can, you can, you know, get good grades, man. You just gotta apply yourself just like you do in basketball and football, you know? Come on, man, you ain't gotta love the teacher. You ain't gotta love the course. You just gotta pass it and get that A or B and you ain't gotta, what? Deal with that teacher no more. You ain't right. gotta deal with that class no more, you know, so. So that's what, what I believe a real true coach. We got different types of coaches that just take advantage of the kids, take advantage of, you know, um, being a coach to get money. That AAU thing I feel is more negative than positive. Um, but if you're a real true coach, whatever sport, uh, you know, whether uh, women or men, um, volleyball, swimming, you know, or, or uh, gymnastics or football or basketball or hockey, um, the role that you can play and impact that you can have is, is immeasurable. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and I love that you talk about that, that flexibility of, of all of those things, right, and how they can inform uh, your advocacy work. And I think that ties in perfectly with the second question, um, which also is going to really draw in on the work that you're doing in community. And so we know that community engagement, right, and especially, again, selfish, I think community organizing, right, one of our approaches at the coalition mm -hmm. is super important when we think about preventing gun violence, right, and not solely the guns themselves, but especially those root cause work, right? So you, you've highlighted all the work that you've done amongst the sports, and that itself is a determinant um, for violence. And so thinking about how that comes into play, but the question that I have for you um, is how do you envision communities coming together to address the issue of gun violence effectively? Let me first give your organization a, a plug and, and props, much deserved Mass Coalition to Prevent Gun Violence. You guys have been a, a doing an amazing job to shed light on this unfortunate social ill and tragedy that we're dealing with in terms of too many guns on the street, the wrong types of, there shouldn't be guns on the street anyway. I mean, come on, okay? If you are a gun owner and you got your license to carry or just a gun owner illegally and you have it to protect your family and your 
your dwelling, cool. But if you're out here with these assault r rifles, AI-15s and AK-47s and now all these crazy ghost guns and modified weapons and stuff, pistols that can shoot like machine guns, what? <laughs> so it, it, it's crazy um, that these things are happening, but we all know that the NRA and, and, and folks value money more than they value people. And that's a sad, sad thing that, you know, I'd rather sell this kid or this man, okay? Cause you know, everybody can get them, uh, them fake IDs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to get what they want, to get in the club, to buy a gun and all that. And it's just, you know, unfortunately being promoted, um, whether through social media or whether through peer pressure or whether protection, some of my students, they, used to carry knives and, and, and 007s and knives and, and, and brass knuckles and guns because they say, Coach, I ain't, you know, Mr. Wilson, I ain't about using it. It's for protection. So when you live in a, in a society or in a, a, a community that is infested with guns and violence is, is the norm, it's a problem. Right. And, and that's perfect example too, right? And so what I think about um, in response to that as well too, so when we talk about so that the, the guns that are there and how that's kind of festered into the violence that we're seeing and that easy access that you were outlining, mm -hmm. um, in terms of combating that, so what role do you think? So not only organizations like the coalition, but I'm also thinking of folks who are doing direct work, right? Grassroots organization, people who are working um, around advocacy and policy changes, what do you think are some strategies that are best to utilize in order to prevent gun violence that we're seeing with young people or that you've seen with your students in the past? It's gotta be about organizing folks, educating folks to one, the, the, the value of guns. Laws have to change, legislation has to change as far as who's selling those guns where they're coming from, there's gotta be serious consequences. And then the, 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 the um, legislators and the politicians have to change the laws. I said earlier, it's driven by money. You know, there's a lot of very uh, 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 disciplined, respectful uh, gun owners that are law-abiding, peace-abiding citizens that use guns to hunt, use guns as, 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 as a, um, as a sport, and but unfortunately we got a lot of sick people who have guns and are getting guns, and the guns are in the wrong hands. We got too many young people to have guns that back in the day, I don't want to sound old and fuddy-duddy, but we used to have fear fights, okay? And we used to have group fights. They call them gang fights. It was with hands and sticks. So no one's dying getting, you know, losing a fight with their hands and, and a stick. But now you put guns in these young kids hands young kids 10 11 12 they're, okay i don't care if you're 19 to 25 so now instead of either diffusing this problem with a conversation or walking away and just being the bigger man or the bigger woman they tend to know it's easy to pull a trigger you see so so we can't give them a access got to be changed Gun sales have to be changed. The laws of what types of guns, how in the world are uh, uh, <laughs> military style weapons being able to be bought by <laughs> citizens, kids? I don't care if you're an adult. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be allowed, shouldn't have access, okay? Even in the military, you know, it's about what? Defend and, and protect, not just killing innocent people, you see. But unfortunately, money rules. Um, so we have to be about electing the right folks that just ain't gonna be talking the talk, right, to get in office, but they have to be true to their word and true to what their campaign speech says, that they're really gonna work to what? Educate young people and parents about the violence that's out there plaguing our communities, guns, bang, mothers and parents and fathers being aware of their kids and what they're into, who they're around. You know, I don't want to sound, you know, like if how's your, your, your son or a, a daughter has a weapon in their house, in their room, in, you know what I mean? 
So I think folks need to be a better pay attention, pay attention better to what's going on in their children's lives. But um, they got to change these laws. They got to change these laws. They got to educate folks more. It needs to at home, in schools, yeah. even at church. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that because what I've gathered too from what you just mentioned as well is thinking about that piece around accountability, right? And so accountability for um, not only individuals and, and the choices that we're making for, for communities, for households and so forth, but for our leaders especially as well, right? Um, and thinking about the ownership that they have over the way that things are kind of playing out when we think about in black and brown communities and what gun violence looks like. Um, and why, they are not to cut you off. Yeah, of course. But... <laughs> I mean, guns are everywhere. They're in the suburbs, right? They're in rural America, suburban America, and also urban America. But when drugs and guns are being uh, uh, pushed into the black community or brown community, you got to question and ask yourself, why is that? You yeah. see, I believe it's by design because, again, it's all about money and then also racism, okay? I don't care how many guns go into the black and brown communities, let them bleep bleeps kill themselves, you okay? But if you really care about people and humanity and, and mankind, I care about all people of all persuasions, as long as you respect me and my people. But if you're about trying to you know, eliminate me and genocide and, and, and wipe us out because of the color of my skin, we got a problem. And that's a very sick, sick thing. But they're pumping these guns into our community, selling guns to people that are not supposed to have them, don't, right? <laughs> don't check their records, see if they have a record, see what their mental health issue, it ain't about all that. You got 200, 300, 500 dollars, okay? Bang, sale, boom, boom, you know. But I just, it, it, it's systematic and it's just something that can be changed, it can be decreased and dealt with but I don't believe, you know, folks are really trying. Right, and I think that, that was great too. And as soon as you started talking about the system, that's where I was, I was headed as well too. Um, and thinking about how pervasive gun violence is when we think about our institutions, right? And so the next question that I had for you, um, and from your perspective, it's centering on root causes. What do you think are underlying root causes of gun violence? And you can answer this in general, or feel free to also answer it specifically through the lens of the Boston area as well. There's, there's no one answer, there's and reasons, there's many answers and many reasons, you know, as far as, you know, there's young men and young ladies that need to be educated to the to causes as well as the effects and the devastation of guns and what it can do. We talked about it earlier, how it not only destroys that young, young man and young lady's life, but their family and also the individual who they harmed and maybe life they took. So that family's all messed up, you know? Right. Uh, um, it, it, it's, it's, you know, um, run that question by me one more time. Yeah, no worries. Um, so also thinking about, right, so how do factors such as poverty, lack of oh, access, yeah, yeah, yeah. just the resources. Socioeconomic, yeah. So, so uh, again, you know, there are soci socioeconomic influences, okay, as well as we talked about social media and how it's promoting and perpetuating violence, you know. Violence is too much violence in the world. There's too much violence in our community. And if you, if that's all that's kind of forced on you and you're exposed to, and, and then what happens, you result to it. There's many young men and young ladies that need some mental health services. There's many folks that I keep saying need to be educated. As you're, as, as, as you're more educated, you're gonna make educational, and I mean educated decisions right. as you uh, are more versed with with the consequences of using a gun or a knife you know you uh, will be you know more apt to not use it knowing the consequences so education um parenting parenting is crucial okay in terms of educating your kids at a young age to let them know about right how to uh, uh de-escalate situations how to walk away from a situation how to not overreact to a, to a situation with violence. I mean, it may sound corny, you know, how to mediate. And I believe, you know, the old saying that, you know, walk away today to live to see, walk away to live to see another day. Kind of, you know, kids feel the peer pressure of, I can't let that dude, or, you know, that girl punk me and, you know, 
they call me this, they call me that. Well, you know, I'd rather walk away and be what you call, uh, uh, let you call me what you call me, even though I'm not that, to be able to what? Stay out of jail and not die, and stay out of the center, center, cemetery or penitentiary. So, yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's a, a conglomerate of things. Education, parenting, exposure, uh, the social media, it can be a good thing and a bad thing, but it's really influencing our young people to do, <laughs> not use good judgment and to do wild things and to act wild. Uh, the latest thing where, you know, now they're punching out females. Hmm. Yes, yeah, should we educate young people, educate old people, old people? Educate. Yeah, there's this TikTok, you know, challenge thing. Now they were up, there was one time thing where they were just knocking out anybody. Now, there's knocking out young ladies. That's unheard of. Like, how could you, you know, get and feel good about sucker punching or sneaking and, and punching a woman? Anybody but a woman, right. I mean, you know. So, so there you go. And, and the mental health services is definitely, um, get these young men and young people some help right. because there are so many young people with receiving the services and opportunity, bang, jobs, skill training programs. I say that when we speak, um, when we do our screenings, um, you know, with the uh, uh, National Emmy nominated movie, This Ain't Normal, yeah. that, um, you know, it's about provide resources and services and jobs and, 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 and uh, mentoring and positive role models so these young men and young ladies can see, well, wow, you know, Hector, you know, Tyrone, uh, Maria, Jasmine, she came from the same hood as me, but look where she's at. Bang, the hood you came from, look at you. You, you made it and you now are blowing up. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, I just think if we can show our young people more positive things, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you end up. You know, it's not the beginning, it's about the end, you know, and the journey, you know what I mean? And so you do all that, and so now kids can aspire to be, you know, that nurse, that doctor, that teacher, that social worker, that electrician, that welder, the hairdresser, okay, yeah. for repair, you know, auto body shop, whatever, bank, TV producer, you know, TV host, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's perfect because it also makes me think about a quote that I hear you say often, right? And as you mentioned, I work with the film This Ain't Normal that centers on system-involved young people. Um, and then it also draws on those root causes of gun violence is that you often say that we're hoping to open eyes to save, save lives, lives yeah. right? And I love that quote so Thank much you. with everything that we do and continue to say it because just like how you're saying it, it also ties into the next question, of course. Okay. But, um, because it's all about that narrative change, right? And thinking about how we can change the narratives that we hold within ourselves, right? And especially when we're thinking about young people, what they may have about their community, uh, their hood, so to speak, um, and how that's being exerted out when they're out and about in the world. And, mm -hmm. and just overall, the, the dominant narrative amongst all institutions around these issues and the communities that are being deeply impacted. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, I'm gonna dive in mm -hmm. to the question on that. And you know, what we're hoping to ask is in your opinion, what do societal constructs or cultural norms um, influence the harm of gun violence that we're continuing to see in communities? So what do you think might be aiding into um, the violence that we're seeing? Well, you know, it's, it, it, there was always violence on TV, you know, whether it be the untouchables or, or you know, the... Um, gang movies, but there weren't a lot of gang movies when I was coming up, you know, and um, but violence has always been part of America, unfortunately, you know, entertainment and all that. But now, you know, there's so much promoting of violence through TVs, through videos, through, like I said, social media, right. through the video clips and that, the, you know, that the kids are seeing because now, you know, these kids are so much into their phones and so much, you know, um, you know, whether it be, you know, the different Netflix, I ain't trying to promote these folks because they ain't giving us a dime, right? But, uh, you know, between Netflix and all these different things, and it seems like societies now, let's make it the, the, the dirtier, the nastier, the more violent, the more chaotic we can make it 
because it's about what? Ratings, you know? It's about ratings, it's about making money. So let's put more blood in it. Let's put more kill him and shoot him up in it, you know? Uh, let's uh, make it more, let's sensationalize it even more, you know? Um, and, um, you know, it's about opening eyes, like I said, and, you, and thank you for the compliment, opening eyes and saving lives, you know? And that's what it's gonna be about, you know? Um, so TV and media, has right. definitely be has unfortunately been a contributor to that, but I mean they're not going to end up do they're not doing way. It's just got to be more positive programming, right. you know. Put more positive programming on these TVs. Think about it in the music, you know, the music we listen to. I mean, I grew up on Chuck D, N.W.A. and and, and Public Enemy and all that stuff, you know, uh, um, Tupac and, and 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 Biggie and all that stuff, but but again. I always tell my son and my, my players and my students, just because you hear bad things and see bad things don't mean you say it and do it, right. you see? So if we put more positivity on TV and more positivity in the music, you see? I was watching a thing with Chuck D, and he was talking about how um, they took them off, right? NWA and all them, and then Chuck D and them, Public Enemy, they took them off and wouldn't sign them and allow them to what? Resign them with the different uh, uh, records uh, industry, I mean, um, companies, because they wanted to change the narrative. Instead of you all educating and waking up your people, right, to stop doing crime, to love one another, love thy brother, love thy sister, you know, educate your mind, boo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Right? Respect your hood, respect your neighbor, you know, and all that good stuff, respect your neighbor. See, all that's positive. That's what should be promoted. You see, by America, by the music industry, by the TV industry, okay? Rather than we got to do more, right? More violence, more guns, more blood, more drugs. Well, you know, it's, you got to promote. It's okay to do drugs. It's okay. Everybody should have a gun. It's okay to shoot somebody. It's okay to go to jail. Oh, really? <laughs> really? It's okay to give up your life and, and be behind bars and be incarcerated where they control your life when you get up, when you go to sleep, what you eat, right. what you watch. I mean, come on. Yeah, and I think w w what I love that you, you highlighted and the term that I'm going to use when you talked about positive programming. Um, and I actually would love for this question that you could talk and draw a little bit more about your work with This Ain't Normal. Um, and it's, so how can we challenge harmful narratives and promote alternative approaches to both you know, conflict resolution. So again, we can think about it in the scope of gun violence prevention specifically, mm -hmm. um, and promote community safety or promote that overall well-being of our young people. It's got to be in every means of communication. We have visual learners, right? We have audio learners. You learn by doing, listening, and seeing. So we can put, like I said earlier, more positive things in these young people's because you got to start young, you know what I mean? I mean, that, not to say you still don't show positive things to older people, you know, boom, because older people are pretty much set in their ways, but they still can learn and change their ways. But when you start young and you're planting values, morals, ethics, religion, education, respect for one another, even though we're different color or different ethnicity or different religion, it's still about respect. Respect, and that's what's lacking. You ain't got to love me and respect me. I mean, no, you, yeah, you ain't got to love me, but respect me. Right. You ain't got to do something for me, but respect me. Give me a chance, you see? Uh, give me an opportunity. And that's what we, we, you know, we're all God's children. And the beauty of, 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 of the creator and what he's, he, he, we're not all orange or we're not all blue, you know, or black or white or green or yellow or pinstripe, you know, or polka dot. And that's the beauty of, 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 of mankind and the creator that we, we, we look different, different complexions, different languages, different cultures, different food, different uh, dress, you see, different music, you see, some music transcends, you know, boom, you know what I mean? But that's the beauty, you know, of our differences and we need to value and respect that versus, you know, I don't like, you know, so-and-so because he's, Latino. I don't like so-and-so because he's black. I don't like so-and-so because he's Jewish. I don't like so-and-so because he's Irish. You know, I can't stand, 
you know, uh, uh, Europeans. And I, I mean, good people are good people. Bad people are bad people. And they're in all persuasions, all religions, all cultures, all ethnicities, you know. Well, yeah, thank you. And, and I appreciate that. Uh, one of the last questions that we had for you um, is really centered. And I know you, you've kind of drawn on it a little bit, but uh, happy to pose it again for you around you know, you being someone who's been deeply involved in community. So we'll say that as an overarching, right? So with the work that you've done with, with coaching and as an educator and, and so forth, um, and also violence prevention efforts, what specific changes or reforms would you like to see um, in gun policy? And so that could be, you know, state, nation. If you want to look drill super specific into the Boston area, we can do that as well. But All the above. Yeah. There are laws that should be uniformed systemic nationwide you see now different states have different things okay and different laws whether it be the speed limit or you know what's allowed what's not allowed you know alcohol marijuana in this state that you know boom bang but whatever but the laws i think there are certain laws that should be reflected in all states all cities all neighborhoods guns priority one you see what i'm saying um you can't have one state that's allowing guns to be sold and it's okay and they're selling my you know the trucks the trunks the trucks <laughs> every other store is a gun shop you know gun shows and all that and then right next to state next next door right next state over across the state line you know they have laws prohibiting that right so i believe again um, this sh it should be a nationwide thing. Every state shouldn't be selling no AR-15s, AK-47s, AK and assault rifles. And, you know, there should be laws uh, against ghost guns and modified weapons and all that. That should be a universal law, a United States, city, state, county, <laughs> you know. Um, so that's that there. There's universal laws. I, I firmly believe it. Uh, we need to hold our legislators accountable. As I said earlier, you know, okay, you got in saying you're going to clean up this and more police presence and, um, you know, education and better schools and, you know, uh, crime watch and different things, you know, a more opportunity for youth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, recidiv 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 recidivism. Recidivism. Yeah, yeah recidivism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, say it fast. Well, no, I messed up. Okay, so. Um, and, and give these young men and young ladies who've made a mistake. You made a mistake. You stole a car. You broke in someone's house. You uh, sold a drug. You, you shoplift or whatever, okay? You may have assaulted somebody, okay? And there's nobody, you know, that hasn't made a mistake, whether they're going to be honest enough to say it, okay, or lie. Um, it's okay, but don't condemn me for the rest of my life or don't put me in a situation when I do get out of prison after I've done my time or I do get out of jail after I paid my bail, right? Now all of a sudden, you paint me with this picture or you put traps out there, right? So I can return, okay? That, 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 give me a job. Why you got, you know, the Corey Sorry, and there should be, of course, Corey Sorry, because again, you know, as far as, you know, pedophiles and this, you know, sexual abuse and, and child abuse and all that stuff, we gotta watch who's with our children and things. But as far as I had, you know, a, 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 I did time for, like I said, I stole a car or I shoplift or I sold, you know, some drugs. Okay, that was in the past. I should be now be given a new clean slate to be able to, you know, provide for my family or if I'm, you know, don't have a family to change my life around. Get it, you know, um, go into service. If I want to go into service, uh, go uh, uh, um, get a job, you know, and, and no, you can't, you know, I see you have a record, you, you're a felon. Bang, I, I, they got to change that. They got to change the laws and give uh, young men and young ladies who have unfortunately been convicted of a felony, um, they got to give them a second chance, sometimes even a third chance. Well, and, I, and I think that's a good point for us to end too. Um, I, I love what you mentioned about that second and sometimes even the third. So one of the, the last portions of that um, question that I think you really answered with that piece was, also thinking about addressing root causes and how that can be done through policy. Um, and again, I think of the work that not only we do at the coalition, but like our close collaborators, Citizens for Juvenile Justice, and again, 
those core um, juvenile justice reform spaces and policies that we can help and uplift and support because we know that our young people need, um, there's unneed mets on what they need to be safe and well and when we meet those needs that the outcome's gonna be reflective. Um, and just like you're saying, right? So when we're giving those young um, children that second chance, then that puts them in a position to be able to do better in the future. If it is that third or that fourth or that fifth. Right. So being able to meet them where they're at to provide that support so that they can be reflective and positive in community. Can I speak to that root cause thing again? Yeah, feel free. And I, it goes back to, you know, one of the earlier questions. You know, when you don't provide a certain community or, or people or ethnicity or socioeconomic group opportunity to good education, to good jobs, to make a, a, a legitimate wage, just like yourself. If me and you are doing the same job, then why aren't we receiving the same pay? You know what I'm saying? See, so if again, I go back to youth in terms of what we expose them to, what we educate them, to give them that religious foundation, give them that good educational foundation. Why are uh, the public schools not as right good and have the resources and quality of the exam schools or the private schools? We know it's about money, but this was the most richest industrial nation in the world. So why aren't, don't all the kids in, in the inner city why don't they have the access and resources that the suburban and private schools have? Okay, it shouldn't be because my, my mother or father are millionaires. It should be because I'm an American citizen and I deserve to have that. And once I get a good education, I got a better opportunity to succeed. Once I got a religious foundation, I got a less of a chance to harm somebody because of the color of their skin or their socioeconomic level. Okay, once I get a chance to buy a home, right, and have what you have, I feel better about myself because I got a home to go to rather than growing up like I did with rats and roaches and mice living and they didn't pay rent, living, you know, yeah. because that's the that's only place me and my family can live, okay, is in this apartment that's roach and rat infested. See, so when you... Uh, 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 the core problems of how you were raised, it, it, it's, you gotta be a strong individual to grow up in the hood and all those traps that they have set up out there for you, right? Crime, violence, drugs, alcohol, you know, uh, uh, not going to school because your boys, you know, cut the hook in school and all that, you know, doing what that crazy record said or doing what that crazy thing on social media, YouTube or, or TikTok said. So we, we, we gotta, it gotta start at home. It's gotta also take place in the schools and in the churches mm -hmm. and then uh, the community centers. We need more community centers right. because if, if whether the, the young kid, uh, uh, you know, in any daycare, you know, it's, you gotta be paid, okay? Uh, it, daycare, daycare's off the hook. But imagine if Angelica and Haas and, 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 and little, little, little uh, Wilson can go to a good quality daycare. So that's the foundation. I'm getting a good foundation from a quality daycare in our community. Then I'm going to a good elementary school, then a good high school. And now that's the foundation for me to say, okay, I know I gotta go to a good college or I'm gonna go to the world of work because you know I'm gonna be an electrician, a welder. I'm gonna you know, design cars, repair cars. I mean, so again, it's a systemic, societal ill that can be corrected right, right by the, the government and by voters who got to make these, as I said earlier, make these uh, politicians accountable. Right. If you don't do the right thing by my community, by my school, by, by, by our neighborhood, you got to go. And once they see that, you know, we got to vote. And I know that sounds corny, because that's what's gonna get the right people in and the wrong people out and, and, and hold them accountable. And uh, there you go. Yeah, and, I, and what I'm drawing on that too is, right, it takes a village, right, to make sure that we're, we have that overall wellness. And so thinking about all of those spheres that you mentioned, right, not only with our young people, but holding that space for community as well is super important. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's that's a great space to, to just be able to talk about, right? How do we really transform things and how do we build upon the injustices that our communities are facing and how do we improve on those? And it, we have the solutions to end gun violence, I think is really the, the culmination of all of the things that you had mentioned as well too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's about letting those most impacted lead the way. And it's also about that accountability piece for the folks in leaderships as well to take on that ownership for creating that change and providing the space for those most impacted to assist in that. Um, yeah, is there, there any, is there anything else you may wanna to toss in before we, we close out for this afternoon? Well, I mean, again, in closing, for my end, there's a lot of the old school that has been lost, forgotten about, or people think is antiquated. And then there's a lot of the new school that is good, but also bad and very harmful and detrimental. So I believe we need to f fuse the two together. The good of the old school, morals, values, respect, like I said, religion, foundation, because uh, we know religion can be, you know, an evil tool, too, if it's preached in the wrong way um, and used in the wrong way. So, so get old school, things that we know have been proven to work with the new school, phase it together, pass the torch to young people like you and Haas and all the other young brothers and sisters trying to make a positive change in their community and life, uh, whether through art, whether through music, whether through education, whether through um, doing programs like this. And, um, and I think that's the key. Uh, we're, we're, we're going, you know, unfortunately, in the wrong direction. But I believe we can overturn it and turn it back up. It's like a roller coaster, you know what yep. I'm saying? And so now that we see that we're going down, what are we going to do about it? And I, you know, I, I encourage and, and, and um, pose this to everybody that cares about people. We can't give up. We can't give up. We got to keep fighting. They want us to give up. The powers that be, all the folks that, you know, and don't get me wrong, there's good rich people, but there's also a lot of evil rich people that are using their money and power to promote evil things and bad things. So we have to educate. I got my little saying, educate your mind, so you have to do crime to make a dime. Okay, I want you to go up, not down. And I want you to stick around. So keep doing the right things, the good things, help one another, share, care, and we'll be all right. Ooh, and I like that. I like that piece <laughs> to end on. And the, and the we'll be all right. Don't let high. So. Don't let high. Don't let high steal my stuff. Don't let high steal I'll my stuff. I'll try my best. <laughs> uh, so with that, thank you, Coach. I appreciate you and your time and for being in conversation and in coalition with me today. Hey. Thank you. Yeah, and I get a hug right on. Yeah. Good job. Good job.